Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Stand-Up, and I wanted to record this uh, tonight, kind of had stuff on mind. Um, this is my uh, architecture, kind of rough sketch, and I'm going to go into more detail um, later on in an actual architecture diagram specific video, but I, um, I always have these post-it notes laying around, so I kind of spec'd out how I'm going to implement my... Uh, Rust whoop, over here, Rust microservice, um, as well as my Python microservice. Um, and to kind of get into the specifics of those, the Rust microservice that you saw um, a little bit last video. If not, I might have it pulled up. I think so. Yeah, so this is the one I've been uh, debugging and trying to get connected to my Rabbit and Q server. So once I have that up, that's going to be responsible for again processing. Uh, it, majority, if not all, of my uh, the data sent from my engine. Um, additionally, I'm going to make a Python microservice that's going to be responsible for uh, plotting a lot of the temperature uh, information that I'm sending from the engine simulator. So, for instance, I want to send up what the uh, the the temperature of the engine. I don't want to graph a uh, basically a heat heat curve of the engine. So, and you know. At uh, this RPM, we can see that the heat increases to this. If I lower my engine RPM down, you can see the heat should decrease depending on a couple factors. Um, and the reason I want to do Python is because Python is very uh, is is excellent for that type of uh, uh, thing. Basically, it has a lot of good um, math and graphing. Um, tools that you can use. Um, I forget what it's actually called. I forget what the main third party is for Python. I've used it once. Is it PyPlot? Py, I don't know. I forget. I'll have to look it up. I'll make a, of course, I'll make a video and cover that. Um, so those are predominantly the, the two uh, other language microservices that I have um, in the works. So again, Rust and Python. Um, if I choose to do another language for microservice, um, I'll add it to my diagram and I'll post a video, but um, I just want to give a brief update on that because I think it's going to be a really, really cool system, um, and I think it's going to come together really, really nice, and it's going to be a good example of, you know, stretching and learning different languages and how they you can leverage a specific language to accomplish something that it's good at specifically. Um, one thing I want to consider is I want to make a microservice probably in, in F sharp. I just want to improve my F sharp skills, but I also F sharp is extremely good at concurrent uh, processing of data because it's it, it really works with immutable data structures similar to uh, to Rust. Now, do I need to use Rust and F sharp? Probably not, but I you know I think it's kind of cool to use a lot of different languages and and just kind of you know, expand the content for this channel and hopefully get insights from people uh, who are really well adept at each of these languages. Um, I've used F Sharp only a couple times, really, um, so I'm not uh, I'm very much a novice at that, at that language. Um, so as far as um, the Python-specific microservice, it's going to be similar. It's going to connect to Again, my RabbitMQ server, um, and when I'm how I'm planning to actually use that one in terms of the core functionality, aside from um, creating and generating the graphs for the temperature curves, um, is I want to probably have that Python microservice be responsible for some of the uh, notification um, handling for my uh, engine simulator. So basically, for example. Um, if the temperatures exceed a certain threshold, uh, I'll have a queue that I can push a message to to say, you know, warning, high temperatures reduce your RPM. Um, maybe we're sending too much uh, fuel or something like that. So send a notification up to RabbitMQ, and I'm going to wire up my front end to listen to that um, or to receive those messages from that queue. So if one ever pops into that queue, we can receive it on the front end, and it'll display in a banner. Um, it, it that's it's pretty. Uh, that would actually be a pretty neat way to create a notification system. But again, have it completely decoupled from 
any kind of direct dependency. So uh, I think that it'll work really well. And again, obviously I'm gonna show a video of that. I'm gonna show everything, but we have a lot of work to get there. Creating this whole robust microservice system is gonna take a lot of work, but once we have it actually prototyped in version one with all the moving pieces, so when I turn my engine, when I turn my simulator on, the animation will run. It'll send all the data up to that to our MMQ server, processed by my Rust microservice. The Python analyzes the temperatures, and can push notifications accordingly. I think it's, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be really really cool. Um, I get excited every time I make these videos. I know it sounds like. I know it sounds like it's like, you know, we just keep, we just keep talking about adding, you know, more and more microservices, but it's going to be really cool. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and it was funny, I, you know, I pretty much sit in the same spot making these. Um, but I'm, it's fun seeing the interaction on some of the videos and seeing the, the views increase and just hopefully we're building that momentum for this project and hopefully we're building, um, really just enthusiasm for programming in general and for software development um, because it's such a unique opportunity that I get really excited about that I hope other people get excited about too and hopefully we can just kind of create something that we can bounce ideas off each other and hopefully use this as a way to teach other people basically that how this stuff really works and comes together and make it as clear and dry cut as possible and just down to earth because honestly when i work during the day as, as my full-time job right in software development sometimes i'm sitting right here doing the same thing it's not fancy it's not you know i'm not traveling to you know two different coffee shops a day you know and, and it's a lot of it is just here right just looking stuff up trial and error, research, prototyping, it's really all the same things as you see on this video. Obviously, it's edited to make it look fancy and stuff like that, but, uh, you know, I hope that these are what, this is what, I, I hope that this channel can really show the reality of it and just how, just how cool it is, right, that you can learn any skill, any language, and literally create any project for free. I mean, I don't know how many other things offer that kind of opportunity with kind of a lower barrier to entry. You know what I mean? Um, and it's funny too. I was, so I got back tonight. I wanted to make this content. Um, not because I just wanted to sit and have something to do, but I genuinely believe in what we're trying to do here and, and what this project represents. Um, it's not about the project itself. It's about the experience and that's what I'm hoping to do. But anyway, it was funny as I was, so I was on a run, I was on a run when, it, when you get to the end, right? It's kind of uphill a little bit at the end. It's funny how many things kind of just space out from your mind and your singular focus becomes returning, you know, your, your return home, right? Do I have enough energy? and willpower to return back to my starting point from you know however long we went um it's funny how many things in life really kind of you forget about right the things that when you're sitting on the couch you're just ruminating on all these things and just you know thoughts and decisions and you know worry about xyz and but when, until you get out there and you are at the end of your run you forget about all that and you're just like, okay, what matters is returning home. And I think that that's really powerful. Uh, whatever, whatever you want to call it, a phenomenon, like something in your, your brain just clicks, meaning you just have to forget everything that doesn't matter. What matters is that we get home. And the same thing applies to software is like, you know, it, you can worry about so many things, but at the end of the day, what works and what do we have to do to achieve that goal? And that's what I want this to be about is reducing it all down to 
key things that actually work. What to, this language is good for this. Let's use that. We have this library that can do that. Let's use that. And the more we broaden our horizons to learn each of these languages to use them for what they were built for, I mean, it's going to change everything. And again, I'm kind of rambling now, but I really, really think that this that this experience and building something and it is gonna it is it is gonna be huge. Uh, and I appreciate all the support that I've gotten on this channel so far. I never thought that. I would even come close to having this many subscribers. Um, I mean, it, it's just absolutely crazy. And I, I'm really, really thankful for uh, everybody watching this for whatever reason. I mean, the, the, <laughs> it's you can watch some, you can watch content that's so much better. I mean, there's so much better programmers than me. I'm like, and I'm decent at best. But so, I'm thankful each and every day for. For what we have going this year is going to be super strong um i'm really looking forward to it but anyway so thank you all for watching this has been a crazy stand up i don't know but we'll be back tomorrow the rest of this week so looking forward to it guys all right i'll see you